Rogers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Kind of tired. Kind of tired. Kind of tired. I had shots today. Oh, yeah. 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 Allergy shots. They well, always make me feel like... Bleh. It's kind of a sleepy day. Dreary outside. Yeah, you know, I it was wish. Raining I still earlier. Have, I still have regular work to do. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... So we got to make this quick because <laughs> right. I got work that pays me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> waiting. Um, I hear you. But, uh, yeah, you know, just um, I just don't like shot day. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine not. Yeah. 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 Um, and actually, if I had had the like roughly 40 minutes that it took me to go get shots, sit there and make sure I don't die and then come back to the office, I would probably be done with work. Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe not though. It seems like everybody started working like two thirty this afternoon. Yeah, that feeds into like one the, of the main the things database. that I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right. So, got to get it in before it gets too late. Yeah, I before guess the so. weekend well, hits. Too, it is too late, and I didn't finish it all. Yeah. But um, you know, people will probably get paid on time, which sure seems like a priority. <laughs> all right. Uh, People tend to like to get paid, especially when they perform work. Yes. It's been my experience. That, yes. And when they don't get paid, they get pretty angry. Yes, I have uh, gotten a few phone Re- calls. Regardless right. of whether you're the person that has any control over that or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, sometimes you didn't actually earn anything during this period because we work with contractors, right? So oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's commission, but it's based on it's based on when we receive payment from our client. Yeah. Right. So... Uh, Sometimes people are like, hey, I finished this last week and we had a pay date and I didn't get paid. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that, that's not an acceptable answer. Yeah. Um, and I have to explain that, well, when we get paid, you get paid on the next payout date. That's that's how it works. You actually <laughs> signed a contract that says that. Yeah. Um, Let's probably go back and read that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should have read In <laughs> fact, you had to initial that segment individually so i guess you just like where are the spaces <laughs> yeah right <laughs> let me put my initial didn't read it at all yeah. um I, I another thing that i've learned over the years in the office is anything that you really want to convey to people in an email you yeah. have to put in the subject line oh um, yeah no that's true yeah. i can i can see that they do not read past the subject line yeah so everything important needs to be in the subject line <laughs> right <laughs> Got the whole email in the subject line. <laughs> Pretty much. Sometimes. Sometimes you can put uh, something that is, you, at least in most cases, is key yeah. enough to them that they will read past the subject line because it mentioned that in the subject. Ah, yeah, yeah. Definitely put that at the end of the email, whatever that thing is, so that they have to read through everything else before they get to that part. Yeah. Because if it's the thing that really matters to them, if you put it first, they don't read anything after that's, that either. That's all they get. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got the gist of this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Everything that matters to me. And then they call and yell at me later about something that was in that email that they would have been aware of if they had read it. Yep. And I say, let me refer you to the email I sent (laughs) on such and such a date. It says very clearly on line three. (laughs) You're not getting paid today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well. Um, So. Speaking of economic idiocy. Yeah. (laughs) So you did what? I, so I watched the State of the Union finally. The other oh yeah, day. I watched it. I watched it live, or I say I watched it live. Like I did my best to watch it live. Yeah, it's pretty boring. <laughs> I yeah. Um, there were a few things that stood out to me about it. Right. Um, <laughs> let's start with the economic idiocy, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't understand how bringing all production to the U.S. reduces prices. Or inflation. Yeah. Um, I I didn't understand how you can raise wages, lower prices, uh, ensure full employment, and um, raise taxes on employers all at the same time. <laughs> you got to have a lot of control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just just be totally fascist, I guess. Yeah. I mean that's um, I mean really that's the only way you can accomplish all of that, right? And even then you're not going to accomplish it. No. But I mean that's, You can make it appear that that's happening, I suppose. Yeah. And of course the full employment thing always, always makes me laugh anyway cuz um because the only 
uh, way that I have seen in my study of history to ensure full employment is slavery. Slavery yeah. gets full employment. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah. But if you are taxing employers more, yeah. then they have less money to spend on other things. Like uh, maybe it's that um, that people don't think about where money for expanding a business comes from. Yeah. Right. Like if you if you want to expand a business, you either borrow money or you the the better, the more effective, the more cost efficient, really way. Well, not right now with interest rates at zero, but, yeah. um, in a free market, historically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, in a free market, the, the way you expand a business is you take your profits from previous years yeah. and you use that capital to invest in your business and make it larger in whatever way by yeah. uh, improving your equipment or opening a new facility or hiring more people or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Um, so if you, Increase taxes on employers, then they have less money to do that with. Yeah. <laughs> it like uh, taxing employers probably slows economic growth more than any other taxation. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd have to agree with that. I don't I can't think of another way that you would yeah, that would a tax that would hurt more, especially as far as employment goes. Mm -hmm. Um and that's uh with with all else being equal, the truth is that if you tax employers more, they, they do hire fewer people, maybe let some people go. Yeah. They don't expand their business, at least not at the same rate yeah. um, that they would otherwise. Uh, they are going to get that money out of somebody else, out of the consumer. So yeah. prices will go up. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, if... So that's the thing, right? Like, you want to employ more people raise the cost of employment essentially by raising wages. Yeah. Lower the revenue by reducing prices. Yeah. And take more money out of the employer's pockets by taxing them higher. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how all these things fit together in a way <laughs> that yeah. And so of course his you know and then Biden goes on and says, you know, what essentially like he explains his economic plan. So he's like, all right, this is my economic plan. I was like, oh, good. He's going to tell me how he's going to do all this. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's not. <laughs> he's going to tell you what the results are going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what we got. Uh, that um, pharmacy costs will go down. Uh, energy costs will go down. Uh, we'll cut the cost of child care. Like yeah. all these prices will go down. Everybody will make more money. But, uh, well, but how 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 are you going to do this? <laughs> well, and being a politician, this is just something with politicians in general. It's one of the only ways you can apply for a job, and and do exactly what you just said. Tell you what the results will be for you getting that job, mm -hmm. but no plan on how to get there whatsoever. Yeah. Like, and politicians do this all the time. My economic plan is going to create this much growth and this thing, this, that, and the other thing, and no details on how to get there. Yeah. Like, you're the first person that's had these goals and wanted to do this. <laughs> right. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Everybody, Everybody else that went in there wanted to raise prices, lower wages. Yeah, and exactly. Like, I mean, that's certainly what they say about the Republicans anyway, right? It is true. That's what they say. <laughs> um. Interestingly, though, and on that point, uh, the other thing that that kind of was an overriding theme as I was listening is I thought, um, except for the presentation and the specific words used and so forth, like the things that he was saying that he wanted to do, yeah, that could have been Trump's State of the Union. Oh, I agree. I mean, he, he there was as far as yeah, you're right. We've got to secure our borders. We've got to increase spending on the military and take care of our veterans. Uh, we've got to fund the police. Yay! Standing <laughs> ovation from all the people, uh, Democrats in the crowd. Like it wasn't just a year yeah, or two ago those, that those people were saying defund the police. The same people that were standing up cheering, by the way. Yeah. Like these same ones. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess they're just relying on Americans forgetting yeah. that all of that happened. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the things that he was calling for, reducing drug costs, like even uh, it, it was I mean, the exact you go all same the way back things to that Trump Bush went. too for well, that. That's like, true. I mean, that was in his State of the Union. <laughs> yeah. 
So. Um, I, I'm just uh, I'm just amazed that there was this like a revolution in America to get Trump out of office to elect a guy that wants to do the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that that's really kind of the point, though, is just like I was saying earlier, they all want to do the same things. They mm-hmm. just disagree on how to get there. Well, how but, do you know? Because they didn't tell you how he was going to get don't, there. But they, none of them tell you how to get there anyway. So you're sitting here going like, what is the real difference here? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, I would say that the difference is illusory. Um, yeah. that there is no real difference between them. There there are very minor differences in where they want to put your money. Yeah. But they're both perfectly content with taking your money and putting it to the things that they want. And it's actually not that big a difference in what, where they want to put your money either. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, both parties are parties of big government. No doubt. Um, and that's, that's to me, that's a deal breaker for both of them mm-hmm. because I... I don't like big government. I yes. like government to be small and local. Yeah, that yeah. So. Se- secession all the way down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Down to the individual. Yeah. Um yeah, it, it, you know, at least let me rule my house yeah, <laughs> the right? way I want. I'm going to enforce a no fly zone over my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I can't enforce it. That's the problem. <laughs> well, you say <laughs> that. Sit on my roof with a shotgun and really going to do it. You don't, um, think, you don't think you can, no, you I can handle I, it? I could keep, I could keep drones from going over my roof, probably. Yeah. Like private drones. Small drones, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> like the one your neighbor's using yeah. to look into your pool. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the guy that's in, you know, two doors down with it, like running it on his phone. Yeah. Yeah, I can, you, I can beat that one. I think you can handle that one, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, and then there was, and this kind of, I like, I'm, I, I want to lead this into our, our big topic for today. But, um, one of the things that he, another thing that he said that people gave a standing ovation for, uh, was about, um, Americans on the terrorist list, uh, at their ability to buy guns and how Americans on the terrorist list should not be able to buy guns. Why should Americans on the terrorist list be able to buy guns? And, I thought, well, because there's no due process with the terrorist list. Exactly. There's no way. This you, is a there's Fifth no Amendment way to violation. find out if you're the only way you find out you're on that list is if you go to get on the airplane and they don't let you. Yeah. And even then, they won't tell you why. Yeah. Like you got to go through all of the stuff to even find out why you're on the list. And there's mm-hmm. no getting you off the list if you even once, even if they make a mistake. Yeah. Which it, they do a, regularly. There's not a good appeals process. It's uh, it, it exactly. There's no due process to it whatsoever. Um, which makes it a Fifth Amendment violation. Absolutely. Like, um, and and that and that's what leads into our big, di- uh, well, at least a portion of our big discussion for tonight, which is this economic war that we've launched against uh, Russia. Yeah. Of course, actually, we've had an economic war going against Russia for a long time, but um, but like one of the newest things that they've added is uh, the property seizures of all these oligarchs. Yeah. And, Gotta get um, them yachts, man. Yeah, exactly. So they're they're you know the proposal, and some countries have already started doing this. Apparently, I don't know how involved the U.S. has been so far, but um, the proposal is uh, that um, that we should just go take the luxury apartments and yachts and planes and um, freeze bank accounts and so on, and you know. I, I assume homes and all kinds of whatever else yeah. um, of all these oligarchs uh, connected to Vladimir Putin. Um, and the, the idea is that, well, you know, um, while Putin is in control, he needs the oligarchs on his side to maintain it. And um, the, uh, so the idea is that if we, if we steal from all these oligarchs, that they'll put pressure on Putin to stop the war in Ukraine so that they can get their stuff back. Yeah. Now, I see a few problems with this. One, um, do you have these oligarchs somehow convinced that if that happens, they'll get their stuff back? Yeah, because it almost never works that way, by the way. Yeah. Once they've seized it, it's seized. Yeah, it doesn't work that way in the U.S. Have you ever, yeah. have you ever talked to anybody who had property seized um, for... Uh, well, you know, there's the things like uh, making suspicious deposits yeah. or um, the uh, accusation that they're involved in uh, with some kind of drug something. And so there's uh, civil asset forfeiture, yeah. any of that stuff. Have you ever talked to anybody who's been the victim of that kind of thing from the U.S. 
law enforcement and talk to them about what they had to do to get their property back if they ever got their property back? Yeah, exactly. They had to spend, uh, I, and I've seen this numerous times where they had this, particularly with people who just had cash mm -hmm. and got had a traffic stop or something, and then they the police seized their cash. Yeah. They had to spend as much to get it back as what they had seized in the first place. Yeah, and they didn't get all of that back. Yeah, and then they still they, didn't they get it all back. They never get it all back. Yeah, exactly. Um, so th that's a problem that I see. And the other part of it, though, is that, like, doesn't it also provide an, an incentive in the other direction? So what if the oligarchs react in completely the opposite direction? Instead right. of saying, well, these guys are t taking all of our property, Putin, you've got to stop this invasion of Ukraine so that we can get our property back. What if they say... Hey, these guys are taking all of our property. Putin, it's your responsibility to protect our property. You need to yeah. to expand this war yeah. to get our property back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so um, but beyond that, uh, it's totally illegal. Yeah. It, it, it is absolutely and completely illegal. And the and it comes down to the Fifth Amendment. Um and I think that the part of this is like a problem of how we view the Constitution, or at least how most people view the Constitution, that it is granting all of these rights yeah. to you. Um, but the the Bill of Rights is what it what it was written to be was a codification of natural rights, yeah, uh, of human rights. Yeah. Um, that uh, it doesn't grant rights to the people; it restricts government action. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't give people anything. It takes things away from the government. It takes possible avenues of, or you know, actions away from the government. It's meant to restrict government, not to give you things. And and it should apply to everybody, uh, citizens or not. So it, particularly exactly. when it comes to regard to the government seizing assets of other people, whether they're mm -hmm. citizens or not. Mm -hmm. Like the the U.S. government should recognize that this is this is what we believe in pe people across the board have these rights yeah so we have no right to just go in and break these these rights whether they're citizens or not yeah um what the the fifth amendment says in part um that the government can can uh that a person doesn't say a u.s citizen yeah that a person cannot be deprived of life liberty or property without due process of law yeah and that's the quote yeah cannot, quote, be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, end quote. Um, you, you can't take from people because you think that they're friends with someone you don't like. Well, and, and, and truth be told, if so if they decided to take these guy, these oligarchs to court mm -hmm. and, and... And they could prove that it was ill-gotten gains. Yeah, and they could prove that, look, you mm -hmm. know, um, you're, you've been supporting Putin and, and just like you say, yeah. And, and you, this property were, was taken from somebody else and given to you illegally. Exactly. Then, right. then, then you have a case there. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they're doing and that's not what they're talking about doing. Like, yeah. there's no inkling of that whatsoever. It's just we're going to send a ship over to come take your yacht, mm -hmm. and that's that's not okay. <laughs> and, and by the way, this applies to like the people in Guantanamo as well. Like yeah, the whether they're U.S. citizens or not, they're not to be deprived of of liberty without due process of law. Yeah, and the vast majority of people that are still in Guantanamo have been deprived of due process of law. Oh, absolutely. Um, and of course, Obama, you know, signed the um, what, what was it? Was it an NDAA? Um, that allowed uh, Americans to be held without charges indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, which is a complete violation of the. You can't legislate around the Constitution. That's not yeah. the. That's, that's not the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. And um, you know, going back to it, this is a codification of natural rights. It doesn't grant rights to people. It restricts the government, and it and it doesn't just apply to U.S. citizens. It applies to everybody. Yeah. It's a. Re Actually, no, that's not true. It applies to to the government. Yeah, that's who it applies to. It doesn't yeah. apply to citizens at all. Yeah, it applies to the government. It's a restriction on government. It doesn't yeah. do and anything what they're, for people. They're allowed to do and yeah. not allowed to do. Yeah, because it gives pretty specific instruction of what they can and cannot do. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, and the way it was, the Constitution was written. The idea was that if the uh, power wasn't expressly given to a branch of the government that they didn't have it. Yeah. Um, and it has been reinterpreted over the years that if it's not expressly forbidden, 
yeah. that they can have it. Exactly. Uh, and the and really, when it comes down to it, they even ignore when it's expressly forbidden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is the reason not none of this works is because you can't you can't have a constitution and a system of government and then not follow it. Yeah. And expect it to just be okay. <laughs> like that's not. Oh, it's all fine. Yeah. yeah everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Everything's fine here. L- look around. Yeah. <laughs> Things are great. <laughs> um. On top of, you know, and that's just one of the things that they've done here. Um, Moving on from the property seizures, uh, there's also the sanctions. Yeah. um, The the general sanctions on the country. Uh, The, um, um, you know, Biden uh, banned purchase of Russian oil and gas uh, just the other day. Yep. Um, And (laughs) the... We've talked about sanctions so many times on this podcast, it gets old. But... um, S- sanctions, first off, are an act of war. Yeah. Uh, it is a medieval siege. Yep. It, it is the equivalent of a medieval siege um, to try and isolate uh, a location economically. And uh, and when I say economically, I don't just mean money. I mean resources. Yeah. Um, as well. And uh, the... You know, the most important part of it is, well, and again, so it's the same argument, right? All right, we're going to make things really bad for the average citizen in Russia. Yeah. So that the average citizen in Russia, who obviously has very strong control over their government, <laughs> right, um, can pressure their government into changing their actions. Um, but once again, on the Russian side, and especially if you believe all the stories of how strong the propaganda in Russia is, yeah. you just handed them prop- fertile ground for propaganda. Oh, absolutely. Like, you are starving because the West is trying to kill you. Yeah, yeah. And that's not going to do anything but have people rally to that government more. Yep. And and we see this over and over again. It happened in Iran, too, with the mm-hmm. same type thing. We did these crippling sanctions. Yeah, it is still happening in Iran. <laughs> still happening, yeah. yeah. Crippling sanctions. And, you know, all it does is make people rally to the government they already have. Because, it makes them more dependent on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it doesn't make any, it goes back, it doesn't make any logical sense. Like this, mm-hmm. th- this isn't a way to win. Yeah. And, you know, in a lot of ways, um, maybe this is a bad analogy, but it, in a lot of ways, it's like punishing your neighbor's kids for something that your neighbor did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the, the neighbor isn't really hurt, but like Putin is not going to be really hurt by these sanctions. Yeah. Um, the oligarchs, uh, except for the direct property seizure, seizure aren't really going to be hurt by these sanctions. And the truth the is, the wealthy is, connected people in Russia will be fine. Oh yeah, the people that it hurts the most are the people that are are the the poorest and weakest in Russia. Yeah. and it's just really kind of unconscionable that a country like ours would intentionally attack those people. Yeah. And then, ex- especially and then, when you're complaining about Putin doing that in Ukraine, well, and then yeah, well, exactly, and then expect those same people to rally around you against their leader, mm. because that's just never gonna work. Like yeah. it's it's just not. Yeah, so. it, it's a it's a moral atrocity anyway, um, and uh, and so it should never be done, and it's never effective. I, I just want to know one time where sanctions on a population have affected the political change that yeah. was desired. Yeah. I it, can't think of any. I, I mean, there might be one. There, if there is and somebody knows about it, email me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. I'd be interested yeah. to read up on that. Yeah. And I even if it's happened anyone. before, though, it's not an argument that it's not, to do it's it. It's obviously not the most effective way to do it because you can probably find some one-offs where it's worked. Yeah. But I think that they're going to be few and far between compared to how many times it doesn't work. And yeah. it works the opposite way. But it goes back to Even something. if it was effective. It's yeah. a moral atrocity. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it, you know, it was like what was uh, Dave Smith um, when he was um, criticizing uh, Gary Johnson um, yeah. about uh, you know that you can't get up there and like you know you have to be stronger in your arguments. Like um, you can't make the argument against slavery is like well it just turns out that that's not the most efficient way of gathering <laughs> cotton. Like 
Like, that's not the problem with slavery. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just not the most effective way. We've got technology to do that yeah. for us now. Um, yeah. So, you know, with sanctions, it's like the argument that it's not very effective is is absolutely secondary and not the real problem with the sanctions. The real yeah. problem with the sanctions is that you are punishing uh, innocent people Yeah. Um, in, in terrible ways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, do you have anything else on sanctions? Before? Yeah, I did. And I lost it. So oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Like I, <laughs> I know I kept yeah. interrupting you. It's all good. Um, so, and then of course the, finally there's the SWIFT system, uh, removing Russian banks from the SWIFT system. Yeah. Um, this I think is the most dangerous by the way. Uh, because okay. the reason I, I say that is because what you're going to end up doing in the end is so the way it works right now, maybe you should give a backgrounder on Swift and then I'll kind of, because people may, a lot of people may not understand or know what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Swift is just a, uh, a system for trans, well, actually not even transferring, um, because money is mostly digital now. Yeah. Um, it, it's a system for notifying banks of, uh, essentially a balance transfers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a, a, uh, a worldwide system that uses a, um, a standardized coding uh, to allow banks to communicate with each other balance changes. Yeah. And really all they do is change that. They don't actually move any money from one to the other. It's just yeah. kind of a ledger yeah, the exactly. way I understand it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the reason I think that, that this is the most dangerous credit is, here, debit here, credit here. Debit yeah. Here. Is because, what what may wind up in the wind up happening is that since Russia is no longer allowed to use this system, that so, Russia and then some of these other countries may just start their own system, mm-hmm. and then what you will end up with is you've got Russia and China and kind of that side of the world on their own system separate from ours. Yeah, which I mean maybe that's not as bad a thing as I think. I just don't see that heading in a peaceful direction. No. Um, I, although, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess in a lot of ways, it's like everybody having their own insurance company. Yeah. You know, whenever you got to, whenever the two insurance companies have to deal with each other, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I, you know, it might be fine to have com- competing. I, I actually think that this is probably not the worst thing. Yeah. Um, the the problem, of course, with the SWIFT system is that it's controlled in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so the U.S. And can put pressure Putin on has the... always had a problem with the SWIFT system. Yeah. He's been, a, he's been trying to set up their own system for a while anyway. Yeah. Well, he's not the only one. And they have an internal uh, bank transfer system or bank communication system yeah. um, already. So the Russian banks all communicate with each other outside of SWIFT yeah. as it is. Um, and there are workarounds to the SWIFT system anyway. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't actually stop you from doing business. It just makes it less efficient. Yeah. Um, and, and just to insert a little bit more economics for you there, um, making it less efficient means that business just costs more money, yeah. which is then just passed on to the consumer. It just raises prices. It yeah. doesn't, it yeah. doesn't actually <laughs> prevent the business from occurring. It just yeah. raises prices. Um, and you know, Russia's already like, talking back on this because you know countries outside of right of russia buy russian goods yeah, yeah. um and uh, so they you know with the payments to russia being hampered by them being removed from the swift system um you know for russian goods uh russia said well if we don't get your payment you don't get our goods yeah yeah <laughs> It's not, we're not going to front it to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're, you're actually, you know, in a lot of ways restricting and it, it's not, you know, the other part of that, this is mostly focused on, um, uh, on controlling Russian energy uh, yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, th- they had made a carve out for it before that's changed, I think. Yeah. Um, and at least in a lot of places that's changed. Yeah. Um, so it's not like Russian oil will then just sit in in Russia and not go anywhere. They'll just turn around and sell it to somebody else. Yeah. I mean, there's well, and that's scarcity the whole, is the first rule of economics, that's right? The like whole, everybody, there's always more, um, there's always more demand for a product than there is. Well, is supply. Well, for the most supply. part. Yeah. But that, that's what affects the prices though, is the right. supply and demand. And um, so you've just made the system less efficient 
because right now, you know, the, in in a free market system, then goods move to the places that's it's that it moves easiest yeah. and fastest and cheapest. Yeah. Um, and in the end, everybody kind of gets what they need because if somebody's not getting it, then they offer higher prices. And if the prices are up high enough, then the producers send it there instead because they make more money. Yeah. Um, but what you've done here is you've you've just shifted the supply chains to work in a less efficient manner, raising prices for everybody. Yeah. And and higher prices on these products in Russia, which they'll now just turn around and sell to the east instead of selling to the west. Yeah. Um, that benefits them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it hurts us. Mm-hmm. Like this deal with the, us not going to buy Russian oil or whatever, which is like I think ten percent is what roughly. I, yeah. yeah um, that only hurts us. That hurts us more than it hurts Putin because mm-hmm. somebody's going to buy that energy. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not going to just sit there. It's not going to build up in some warehouse somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to buy that. Yeah. Um, and the the oil and gas that's not going to Europe now is going to be bought most likely from the U.S. And you may think that that benefits you, but it doesn't benefit you. It benefits those specific corporations. Prices still go up for you. Oh, yeah. And we're, well, I mean, we're seeing that daily. Yeah. Um, like every, like I'm, I'm, I'm in the habit, I'm buying gas almost every day now because mm-hmm. I, I want to keep it full and I don't want to have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you did hit on an important point in that it, it will, it, it is likely, um, if you use this tool that was developed in, in the, uh, in the U S as a weapon, then, um, then it accelerates the development of alternative systems by other countries in the world, yeah. um, particularly countries that are at odds with the U.S. about whatever. Yeah. Um, and and you may think, well, you know, if we're, you know, if we've got an antagonistic relationship with Russia, Russia and China anyway, what do we care if they develop their own system? First off, we do a ton of business with China, so think about that. Yeah. But um, but it it it's not just them. Um, the uh, European Union actually already developed a. Um, uh, an alternative system um, after the U.S. dropped out of the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal. Oh, really? Um, because uh, th- because the U.S. using the SWIFT system was preventing um, trade with Iran, and those other countries in the EU they had wanted agreement. to continue. Yeah. yeah, wanted well, to continue with the agreement. Yeah, um, they developed their own system to work around SWIFT so they can continue continue trading with Iran. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, those who, are our, who our also, good allies. Who also has a lot of oil. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and so it's just, I don't know. Uh, the other thing, though, and this, this should be of greater concern um, in a lot of ways for our economy anyway, is that it, it also incentiv- incentivizes um, alternatives to the U.S. dollar for the world reserve currency. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of more where I was going with the SWIFT thing as far as being okay. dangerous. I mean, I thought that it would be more connected to SWIFT, but it, you're right. The big, the big danger here is that if, if countries decide to not trade in dollars the mm-hmm. way they currently do, it's going to create less demand for the dollar. Yeah. And in turn hurt the value of the dollar. Yeah. The only thing really that is probably maintaining the value of the dollar as it is, is just that it's the world reserve currency. Yeah. Um, if the U S dollar was not the world reserve currency, uh, chances are that inflation would really run away. Yeah. And, it, and that could, you, if you have countries starting to pull out from using dollars, mm-hmm. That it could it could cause that to happen in a hurry and give Russia and some of these other countries an opportunity to do to us what what we're doing to them. Yeah. Um, so think about that for a minute, like you because yeah. so we talk about sanctions and how it hurts the individual. Mm-hmm. We hadn't really felt the impact of another country putting sanctions on us and mm-hmm. it hurting us. Yeah. Um, that that this is a scenario where something like that could happen where a bunch of countries get together and decide they're going to um, stick it to us by not using dollars anymore mm-hmm. and then impact the amount of dollars in the system. And, and, and yeah, really China unloading its debt, yeah. uh, the debt that it controls the U S yeah. Um, or, you know, essentially what I mean by that is them calling it in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, the, yeah. Um, the, the downturn of 2008 wouldn't hold a candle to what would happen if the value of the dollar were to collapse in that way. I mean, you're looking at another Great Depression scenario. Yeah. I mean, that would be, that would, I mean, that's what it would be. Yeah. 
Um, Trading in bullets. Yep, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. By the way, that's the that's if you want something to invest in, I, I recommend ammo. <laughs> yeah. Ammo and cigarettes. But it can't be 10 millimeters because not enough people have those. Yeah. Uh, you want to get your good caliber, your main calibers, the <laughs> calibers everybody uses. 9 or 45. 9, 45. I mean, I like 357, but you yeah. know. Well, um, everybody has 9 and 45. Now. Yeah, that's true. And then everybody some of your have... rifle calibers, I guess. Yeah, 223, yeah. 556, mm-hmm. some of that. That's the same, isn't it? Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah, you want something a little bigger, though, you know. Yeah. Uh, 308 308 yeah, yeah. probably a good yeah. anyway um getting off <laughs> by <topic>. emma <laughs> <laughs> um and then i i mean i guess that's that's probably most really all i have on the economics of this this economic ward yeah did you have something else you wanted to add to that no um i mean it i do kind of question so it's taken us i, I mean i look at the past 20 years Mm-hmm. Um, what's kind of happened since nine eleven and and a little after and whatnot, and like how have we gotten here where we have such a horrible relation with Russia, and yeah. and why and and who does that benefit and why? Like do do the do you think that the powers that be really believe that by us having such an antagonistic relationship with Russia that it makes the world a safer place? I don't know that they i think that there's a lot of people that that genuinely believe that in order to secure the united states we have to control everything yeah. everywhere yeah um that the only way to because really that's provide our, that's security for the united states yeah. is to be the world empire yeah. and and that actually like brings up another point we can get back to what you're talking about here um especially like once this is all started and people are talking about uh, Putin wanting to take over the world or rebuild the Soviet Union. We need that. He wants a new Russian empire, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Which I just don't believe is true. Um, and, you know, he's misquoted and taken out of context when he said actually something along the lines of anyone who doesn't mourn the fall of the Soviet Union is heartless. Yeah. Uh, he was talking about the humanitarian disaster that occurred in the Soviet Union after, or in, in the former republics after the fall of the Soviet Union. He, yeah. He wasn't saying that... Um, that they shouldn't have let it yeah, collapse. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, you might be surprised to hear this, but uh, Vladimir Putin is a capitalist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, crony... <laughs> right. but he is a capitalist he's not yeah. a communist he, he's yeah. not a socialist he doesn't want to rebuild the the soviet union yeah and i i don't understand why when the soviet union collapsed we maintained a an antagonistic relationship with russia um because essentially we continued in an antagonistic relationship with the very people who overthrew the evil soviet union yeah which is what we wanted yeah. <laughs> like so. So we won. Like, and that's it's, it's, that's the why reason I say like twenty years is a little light. I mean, there was some time between the the collapse and then. Yeah. Um. Because I they, what the collapse happened? What about thirty years? Yeah, about 31? thirty. Yeah, it was ninety, eighty nine, ninety, ninety one. Yeah. Depending on where you want to draw. Where the you line. draw the line in? Yeah. I mean, like officially, it was. Uh, December 91, yeah. I think is when the, the red flag came down and yeah. the red, white, and blue of the Russian flag went up over the Kremlin. Yeah. Um, I think it was Christmas of 91. That sounds about right. Um, yeah. I, I'm not a hundred percent on that. I, it was Christmas. I, I, yeah. I was still small <laughs> then. So <laughs> it, it was definitely Christmas. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to this stuff. Yeah. Um, what I did want to say before we get back to that on, as for right now, if you're concerned about Russia wanting to be, rebuild an empire. It is important to be aware that the U.S. is the world empire. Yeah. Not Russia. The U.S. has roughly 800 foreign military bases in more than 70 countries. There's only 192 countries in the world. Yeah. Right. right. Um, so in more than a third of the countries of the world, the U.S. has military bases. Um, and they have... Uh, Roughly 800 of them, with 150 to 200,000 um, troops deployed yeah. uh, outside of the United States, yeah. um, and and actually it's under 200,000 for the first time since like 1960 or something like that. Yeah. Um, Russia has, oops, 
I hope y'all didn't hear that. Anyway, um, Russia has fewer than 20 foreign military bases in about half a dozen border countries. Yeah. Well, and that's the reason, like, so, I mean, we are the empire. Like, there's no Mm -hmm. question about that. Actually, and and moving beyond that, I'm pretty sure all of which invited Russia in as part of a security agreement. (laughs) Um, Whereas uh, the U.S. maintains military bases and troops in places that don't want us there. Yeah. Okinawa has been trying to get rid of the U.S. military base there for a long time. Iraq's uh, parliament voted the U.S. out of the country uh, several years ago. Yeah. We hadn't left. Yeah. (laughs) Make us. (laughs) Yeah. So... So yeah, I mean, I just, I don't see, I, it just would make so much more sense if in the early 2000s, if we had just made an effort to keep peace mm-hmm. between us and Russia. Yeah. And, and we've, we've done the opposite of that. We've been nothing but antagonistic and, and just created problems. And it, it, it just doesn't make sense to have the two biggest nuclear states at odds with each other constantly. Yeah. Like it seems like the the people in power would have made it particularly on our end mm-hmm. um would have would be like well we need to really make an effort to 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 be friendly with Russia. Yeah. Um and the truth is is the idea of that kind of scares me too because if you've got the two biggest nuclear powers then they can bully everybody else. Then they can bully everybody else. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and you end up with you end up closer to a one world government mm-hmm. where the the two biggest ones are in control of everything. Yeah. So I'm not even saying that that's the perfect scenario, but it seemed like it would just seems to me that that would have been the direction to have went. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, um I, I think like drawing this back to the oligarch uh, issue um, with the property seizures, yeah. Um, I think that you know permitting spheres of influence in your region is perfectly fine, yeah. um, because I, I, you know, it. In a lot of ways, to me, it comes back. Now, this is applying to governments, so it's not the same thing. But, yeah. um, but certainly with the oligarchs, it it is. Uh, this is about personal property. Yeah. And I think that respect for personal property is um, an essential part of a civilized society. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and e- like even in communal societies, like even in the, you know, the small scale tribal societies where the, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of communal property and so forth. There was still personal property. Yeah. And don't everybody out there take this the wrong way. But like in a lot of ways, your children are your property. Yeah. Right. Like Absolutely. nobody needs to mess with your children. Yeah. They're well, your yeah. children. And it's nobody your, needs to yours. tell me how I, how I need to raise them and don't raise them. Like, yeah. yeah that's... And this is where I'm going to get myself in trouble because they're going to take just this segment and not what I say afterwards out later. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like your wife belongs to you. Now you yeah. belong to her too. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is, exactly. this works. That's both a ways. mutual. You entered into a mutual <laughs> agreement that we own one another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, you know, which is why it, it can be such a pro- why adultery is such a problem. And in fact, yeah. adultery is such a problem in, in a society, like disrupts a society so badly that these small scale societies, yeah. that people were very interdependent, yeah. um, like adultery had death sentences in a whole lot of cultures. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it had death sentences because it can disrupt a society so bad that people starve. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't take long, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, it, you know, in the same way, though, that these countries, like, they have their area. Yeah. Like, the... Well, and that that's... I, and I think being respectful of their property, in a sense, but certainly, like, you know, their security concerns. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's an important part of getting along Well, it, in the world. <laughs> and what I... It just doesn't make sense to me, and I can't wrap my head around the idea that, like, what would be so bad if Russia kind of dominated that side of the world? Like, mm-hmm. if they, you know, if they were all ally, if Russia was all allies with all of the former Soviet um, countries, yeah. like, wh- why is it we had to bring them into our fold mm-hmm. and 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 put them against Russia? It just yeah. it 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 doesn't make. I mean, I guess if you if you want to eventually take Russia over, it makes strategic sense. Mm-hmm. But that's not what we want to do. Like, it shouldn't be what we want to do. But maybe yeah. it is. Like, yeah. maybe that's that's the plan. You know, mm-hmm. um, because it 
like we dominate our side of the world. It's not like yeah. It's not like Mexico is allied with Russia, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, there was a moment after the fall of the Soviet Union where the U.S. was the only world superpower. Yeah. And um, there are a lot of people that want to keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, through force, if necessary. Well, and maybe, so any challenger that begins to rise, yeah, China, Russia, yeah. is yeah. a danger. Has, has to be dealt with, and has to be dealt with. Yeah, and and maybe that's my answer. Is that, or maybe you're providing me the answer with, uh, you know, after after the fall of the Soviet Union, the powers that be decided, well, we've got to keep them down, mm-hmm. and and not bring them into the fold and let them overtake us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it is just like uh, ingrained prejudice. Yeah. I mean, you, you had people, like people making decisions at that time had had 50 years, roughly, um, less than, but I guess 45 yeah. years yeah. of Russia being an enemy. Yeah. And and, and they, so I you know, live, they continue to think of Russians being that being way, enemy. even though our enemy... Was yeah. the communist Soviet Union? Yeah, is the Union of Soviet well, Socialist Republics, which didn't exist anymore. Well, and that's the reason I have. So I didn't live through that, so I can't really speak. And the to new it. Russia again to point yeah. out was the people that overthrew that. Well, that's that's <laughs> kind of to my point that where so I didn't live through all of that, so I can't speak to it. But mm-hmm. it just would seem to me as somebody who had lived through all of that would be like, well, we won, like, mm-hmm. and take that as a victory, and then the people who overthrew should be our allies now yeah. because they did what we wanted them to do. Yeah. Um, but that I, wasn't the case. I think that people slightly older than me still carry a strong bias against Russia. Yeah. Um, I, I was 15 when the Soviet Union um, collapsed. Uh, most of my memories are during the time where we were dealing with the Russians yeah. regularly, you know, through Reagan years and the uh, HW, uh, mm. you know, Bush the Elder yeah. Um, making deals with Russia and really kind of winding down the conflict in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, I think people that are, you know, roughly a decade or more older than me um, had a long time to learn to hate Russia. Yeah. And and, and a stuck. lot of those people are still in politics. Yeah. Well, that's the truth, <laughs> which is a problem in and of itself. Including by the way. our president. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's part of it is that there's just kind of this like, learned bias that they can't get rid of yeah yeah but i don't know well it's a shame I, it's just an idea it's it's a shame because i really just feel like it it makes the world a danger more dangerous place mm-hmm. especially now that we're in a situation oh, yeah. where we're, we're we're arming another country against mm-hmm. The other nuclear powered country. Yeah. Like, and openly, it's not even like a secret. Like, I mean. It's such a terrible idea anyway, because the Ukrainians cannot beat the Russians, no matter how many weapons we give them. No, no. Um, you heard, the, right. Um, you heard the story where uh, the, um, was it Sullivan? I think it was Jake Sullivan um, got out there and uh, there was like discussion of um, other. Uh, NATO nations providing jets yeah. to uh, Ukraine yeah. and like Poland was one of them like uh, you yeah. know uh, Polish uh, and um, and I think it was Jake Sullivan got out there and said that if the Polish uh, like any jets that the Polish gave to Ukraine to help them defend their country um, the US would backfill so essentially saying like any of your Poland has MiG-29s we'll replenish them. Yeah. yeah so any of your MiG-29s that you give to Ukraine will replace it with F-16s brand new F-16s or F-18s or whatever who knows yeah, yeah. Um, he might have been specific I don't recall I didn't actually see the interview I just heard coverage of it later yeah. but uh, so Poland immediately responded and said we will immediately and at no charge give all of our MiG-29s to uh, Ukraine um, but we are going to give them uh, to the U.S. to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. Because as soon as somebody has to, and that's part has of... Has to fly a jet plane, a fighter jet, into yeah. Ukraine, where the Russia controls the airspace. Yeah, where yeah. it will <laughs> so, soon be shot down. Yeah. And yeah, how, and, do you, uh, how do you do delivery? How do you take <laughs> yeah. delivery and, on that? And Kirby... Um, 
one of my favorite spokes liars uh, out of the Pentagon because he sounds like such an idiot so frequently, and I yeah. I get a kick out of it. Um, Kirby like immediately put out a statement saying that we do not approve of this transfer and like yeah, so right. they backed off immediately. And I yeah. I, I thought this story was funny. Yeah. Um, yeah because, because essentially Poland just called the U.S.'s bluff. Yeah. Like yeah, right. we're not taking. Yeah, you know they can have our planes, but you're taking them, they're not us. <laughs> yeah, we're not delivering them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, the U S started backpedaling really fast. Yeah. Uh, cause I, and when I, the first I heard of the story was actually when they were talking, like it was a big news item on France 24 that the U S did not approve of Poland transferring fighter jets to Ukraine. Yeah. And I was like, why is this, what a <laughs> random thing? Like, why is this such a big news item? And then I, yeah, once I, you I dig a little further, it's like, yeah. oh, there's a whole little thing just happened here. <laughs> yeah, I found out, I found the backstory, and then it yeah. made me laugh. Um, so uh, I, I do, before we get out of here, um, I do want to address this uh, this other news item. Right. Um, you know, as long, as long as we're talking about everybody lying anyway. Yeah. Uh, so there, like, I heard actually, there was a guy, um, the guy that we met up there, John something, uh, that sat with us at the uh, Libertarian convention that we talked with uh, oh, a bunch. Yeah, uh, the I sales guy. I know you're talking to right. about. Yeah. Um, yeah, gosh, I can't think of his last name right now. Anyway, um, he was asking me what I thought of the uh, U.S. bioweapons labs in Ukraine thing. I said, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. And so he showed me this uh, like tweet storm um, from some guy doing independent research that was saying, "I, you know, I was digging into this and I found, you know, these documents from." from 2015 saying that the, you know, an agreement between the U S and Ukraine about these, uh, you know, bio facilities and, and like there's 20 something of them in Ukraine and they, you know, they're in, involved in bioweapons research and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, well, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to dig a little deeper. Yeah. Um, and then I suddenly couldn't find anything about it except that this was all a big hoax. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And, um, and then uh, it came back up the other day, and I, uh, because Victoria Newland gave a little, um, was answering questions about the Ukraine crisis and other things, but uh, mostly about the Ukraine crisis in the Senate. Yeah. And, um, and she mentioned this. And so I, I heard, I don't know how to present this. Um, I want everybody to hear this clip from Victoria Newland. Okay. Um, because I, what I'm hearing on the mainstream media, nobody from what I've seen in the mainstream media, and the and the big one for me is France 24 because they were all over this. Yeah. Um, and but they didn't ever play this clip. What they play is Jen Psaki saying that the Russians lie and the the U.S. does not have um, you know bioweapons research in Ukraine, and that may be true. Um, but it, the whole thing is a little suspicious, and so I, I do want people to hear um, Victoria Newland kind of uh, tiptoe around being very careful with the words that she uses. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting to me because I, I just find it hard to believe that there would be labs, labs of the sort in Ukraine and us not have our hands in them. Yeah. Like, I mean, like there was one in China and we had our hands in it. Yeah. Like, exactly. And we ain't exactly allies with China. Right. So, I mean, I just find it hard to believe that Ukraine has these things and we're not. There's one in China that had absolutely nothing to do with the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. The, the pandemic may have started in that city, mm -hmm. but it didn't have anything to do with the lab. Right, right. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> that was like, yeah, one hell of a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make that clear because I want our video to stay on. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we don't want to get taken down, so. <laughs> and I, I'm, I hope that I'm saying this in such a way that people understand. Um, but here's the clip from Victoria Newland. Uh, uh, Marco Rubio is the questioner here. Okay. I, and this is, an, well, I'll come back to him in a minute. All right. All right, here's a clip. Does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of 
uh, Russian forces should they approach? I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. Okay. Yeah. They are just normal biological research facilities that we are very concerned that the Russians might get their hands on the materials from these totally normal <laughs> biological research facilities. Yeah. Sounds a little sketchy to me. Yeah. Um, and so like you already heard the start of the, the next part, uh, which is how you know that the, this, this line of questioning was planned. Yeah. Um, partly because Marco Rubio is not the guy that's going to um, be the one trying to expose secrets of the United States uh, yeah. in, in a public um, Senate hearing. Um, I, what's happening is that they know that this stuff is about to get exposed yeah. and they're trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. So um, you heard his, uh, him start the, the next question um, in a very leading manner. So yeah. would you like to hear the finish of that question and the response? Let's do it. Okay. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100% it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. It is classic Russian technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. <laughs> now, this is kind of interesting. So they obviously, they set this up in order, to, like the first part of that was given so that they could do the second part of that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so that they could go ahead and make clear right now, go ahead and pre-blame Russia yep. for anything that happens um, at this point. No, of course, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, and uh, if anything happens, it's obviously the Russians. Yeah. And these aren't bioweapons labs. They're just regular biological research facilities that we don't want to fall into the hands of the Russians because it would be terrible if they got the those research materials. Yeah. Um, if and, they found out what we were making. Yeah. And if anything happens, obviously it was the Russians. It wouldn't have... And, and it won't have come from our biological research facilities because there's nothing dangerous in there that we don't want to fall into the hands of the rest. I mean, the, the, yeah, the double speak is just, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I do also, I guess, want to point out to everybody or remind everybody that all of the major, uh, chemical weapons attacks that occurred in Syria yeah. were hoaxes. They were done by the opposition, not by Assad. All yeah. these were all blamed on Assad. Trump launched a bunch of missiles twice. Yeah. Um, on uh, that was for when he looked the most presidential. Right. That's right. <laughs> uh, and uh, all those chemical weapons attacks turned out to be um, red flag events by the opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Or they weren't events at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, essentially they. So they're they're setting this up again, and I will ask the same question now um, that I asked about. Uh, Bashar al-Assad back then. What purpose could Putin possibly have to set off chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine? Because he knows that'll draw NATO in. Yeah. And he doesn't want to draw NATO in. Yeah. There's no benefit to him whatsoever to do that. Yeah. Why would he do that? Because he's a madman, but he's not a madman. This yeah. guy has been nothing but rational his entire career. Yeah. And I think we've said it on the podcast before. Anytime somebody's telling you the leader of another country is a madman, mm -hmm. be wary of that person because that person has not read the history and looked into the background. Yeah. They're just that that's never mad men don't generally run countries. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean they they can, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. I, I now they, I won't they deny that he's ruthless. Well, yeah. I, but he's I mean, irrational. Well, that's just it. And he's he's not going to do something that would be suicidal for mm. him. Because that would be. Yeah. Um, it, it just wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I was listening to uh, Scott Horton's interview with Peter Van Buren this week. And, um, you know, Peter Van Buren was with the State Department for a long time. Has uh, interacted with, uh, um, you know... Uh, diplomatic departments of a bunch of countries and, and so on. Yeah. And um, 
what he was saying is that if you want to know what Putin's going to do here, you got to look at what the political goal is, yeah. and that his he thinks that the political goal um, is to create a buffer, just like a buffer between yeah. the the borders of Russia and um, and NATO or um, Western controlled weapons and and so forth. Yeah, and so. From that, and I can't remember exactly what he said, but I, I'm. This is what I think. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he took the whole eastern part of the country. Yeah. Um, but it would be just as easy for him to just make sure that the the Donbass republics are independent republics. Yeah. Because, again, if he brings them into his nation, he's now he's even more like yeah. deeper into enemy territory in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right. Like he's yeah. the, you know, um, so I think he wants independent nations on his border that aren't, yeah. uh, you know, aren't antagonistic towards him, aren't yeah. like anti-Russian, which and, doesn't seem like that much to ask by the way. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, now, but here's the concern is that if, uh, NATO continues to, and the U.S. well, yes, part of NATO. If the Western countries continue to fund the resistance in Ukraine, mm. they will eventually lose. Yeah. Um, but Vladimir Putin doesn't care whether these are happy people or if they're still there. He's yeah. looking for a buffer. Yeah. So it is no problem for him to rebelize the western part of Ukraine in order it like yeah. a space uh, like a no man's land is just as good yeah <laughs> and russia has a history of doing this type of thing just yeah. like completely decimating an area yeah to, i mean they were brutal in their um in their defense of syria for bashar al-assad yeah yeah um and uh there's no reason to expect that they would be different here because exactly. he, he's not, as Peter Van Buren said over and over again, he's not trying to win hearts and minds here. He's just trying to create a buffer. Yeah. And, and a, Whatever you know, he's, a, a graveyard between him and the next country is fine with him. Yeah, exactly. So, so, uh, like, so, 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 so you have to ask yourself, who's the real bad guy here? Now, granted, Putin's the bad guy because he's doing this. Yes. But who's the next bad guy here? Because we're the ones encouraging these people to to do something that's against their self-interest yeah yeah the best thing for ukraine to do would be to deal yeah to get peace with russia whatever that takes if mm -hmm. and if that means they're never going to be in nato so be it by the way they're never going to be in nato anyway yeah so yeah. why is this like a sticking point like i go back to that i'll bring mm -hmm. it up every time we talk about this mm -hmm. like this should not be the sticking point that it is yeah this this should this this is a if this is a route to peace it should be taken yes agreed agreed okay. um it, it depends on what your goal is yeah um and if your goal is to humiliate Putin or to beat Putin or whatever. Well, we can do that, but there's going to be a whole lot of dead people between here and there. Yeah. Um, and there will be a whole lot fewer dead people between um, here and the end of this if Ukraine just deals. And yeah. Ukraine would be much more prepared to make a deal if they didn't think that they were going to be supported throughout this by the West. Yeah. Well, that's the whole reason we're here. Like we yeah. would have never got to this point if they didn't think that, that we had their back and that we would supply weapons and we would do this and that mm -hmm. and other. And thing. we would come to their aid. Like I, they yeah. really thought that NATO was just going to step in. Yeah. You remember when I was reading those uh, statements from, um, from him when we were coming back from, uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Yeah. When we were coming back from the, uh, the, um, convention convention. Yeah. Um, and he sounded so, he sounded completely like he just didn't understand why NATO hadn't come and started fighting the Russians with yeah. him yet. Because when you were reading me that, I was completely floored. Yeah. I was like, there's no way this guy seriously believed that. But apparently he did. Yeah. Like he seriously believed that the U.S. was yeah. and NATO was going to come step in. Yeah. And like there's no reason for him to have believed that. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, and even now when he's talking about his, uh, the no negotiations, well, oh, actually I guess, yeah, that too. But, um, when he's talking about his negotiations with, with Russia, um, he's saying, you know, he's prepared to, uh, to declare neutrality, but he's not going to bow to Russian ultimatums. Yeah. Well, so now you're just, you're continuing to fight over a point of pride. Yeah. It's not even a, like a, something that you want. Like, 
you're content with giving this particular concession. Yeah. But you're not going to do it because they've said that that is something that you have to do. Yeah, right. Which like, is let's, again let's how this art, got started. How, how many are how many dead people do you want over semantics? Yeah. Like I mean cuz that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, I don't know. Uh going back to a lot of, of people think that he's a hero and I think that he's a fool. Yeah, he looks good on TV. I'll give him that. Like he's he's very convinced. Like he's got I've, presence. He he definitely has a stage presence that's not mm-hmm. to be underestimated. Yeah. Um. Because because I saw it when every time I've watched him since all of this started. Foolish and charismatic, the worst kind of leader. Yes, it's not good. <laughs> um. To take it full circle back to the State of the Union, the big thing that I took away from the State of the Union was um when when. Biden was talking about Russia and mm-hmm. and tra- and he kept saying it over and over again to isolate Putin. Isolate yeah. Putin. Like that's what we want to do is isolate. Him. And all I could think the whole time is like that's what does that do for us? Mm-hmm. Isolating a man that's got access to the one of the biggest nuclear arsenals on the planet. Yeah, like actually it, the biggest nuclear. The biggest, yeah. yeah. They have yeah. more than we do. Do they really? Mm-hmm. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. So I think yeah, so, so he's got the, Yeah. So he's either thousand. way, more than enough to destroy us many times over. Yeah. Um like so we want to isolate that guy. It seems like we'd want to make peace with that guy. Mm-hmm. Like that's I mean that's and the whole time I was listening to at least that segment of the the speech, that's what I kept going back to. I was like this is just dangerous, yeah. senselessly dangerous. Like, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. We cannot have a rival to our power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Again, point of pride. Yep, there you go. And there's some old saying about pride, pride cometh before the fall or whatever. Um, That's not the one I was thinking of, but that is one. (laughs) But that is one, yeah. (laughs) Oh, well. Um, All right, well, I, I guess that's as good a place as any is that, like, the goal here should be peace. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, and and should be should be constantly negotiated until it's gotten to. Mm-hmm. Like and and the truth is is if 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 the US had wanted there to have been peace, we could have headed this off before it even happened. Well, yeah. That's um, true too. And and it it just makes me wonder what's really at play here because like I said, there's no reason we couldn't have had peace before we even invaded. Yeah. Big military spending and uh, volatile markets where speculators do quite well. There you go. Yep. A lot of money. I mean, that's what there's it comes down there's to a lot money. of money. I was thinking about that the other day, too. Like, I don't know where the money is to be made right now, but you're right as far as, like, this is the market to make some money in. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can really predict what's going to happen in the coming months. Yeah. Um, and what will end up happening is in the coming months, we'll look back and be like, man, like we should have seen that coming and invested in it. Yeah. Because we could have made some money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what those things are, so I, I have no help there. <laughs> but, I, I haven't, I haven't done that in a long time. Yeah. So. And now I'm afraid to. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely a volatile market. And and yeah. like I say, you and you can try to predict what's going to happen, but you don't really know. Like, yeah. Uh, so if anyone has some sound financial advice, Michael at thelibertymike.com. <laughs> Always willing to listen, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, we, you know, uh, so the schedule has to shift. Yeah. Uh, not next week, though, necessarily. I think right? next week we may be good for Thursday, but generally mm-hmm. we're going to probably be moving to Fridays. Yeah. Anyway, we, yeah, we're back into softball season. So, yep. um, kids' softball on Thursday. Yep. Uh, so, regular date day will probably be Friday yeah. um, going forward for a couple of months. Yeah, at least for a little bit. And, uh, but um, we plan to be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Uh, like and share, comment, tell your friends, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things help. Absolutely. Um, you know, reviews on iTunes and Podbean are nice as well. And uh, I don't know, anything else you can think of. Yeah. Like write an article referencing us. <laughs> there you it's go. Like, this is where I got my information. It's solid. Yeah. Um. And uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, love free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.